person who took advantage of me got away with it. God was not faithful to me. See, I turned it up over here. And, and, and we feel like God has let us down somehow. But that is a really limited view and understanding of what God's faithfulness really is. And we tend to believe that as long as he does what I want him to do, and I get that anything that I want, yes, then he's faithful. But if it turns out differently than I planned, well, now, let's start to question it, right? But the truth is that Scripture tells us all the way through what just these two songs tell us, that God is faithful and it continues throughout all times and all generations. And the truth is that when we don't get the answer that we want, God's faithfulness takes a different form. Not only is delivering us from our trials like we want them to, but being strengthened in them. That is giving us what we need to endure. It's because it's just as much a miracle to be sustained through adversity as it is to be delivered from it. Amen. Now, those flashy miracles, they are wonderful. They are so exciting. But do not downplay the ongoing miracle that carries you through a difficult time, maybe for years and years and years and years. Active every day, all the time. That is a miracle of God, too. Paul said in his most deepest struggles, that God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, that is not the kind of miracle that anybody's going to call you up and tell you, uh, give me an interview about this, or stand on the stage and give your testimony, <laughs> most likely. But my goodness, we do not need to downplay and be dismissive of God's power being manifested in our lives as if being rescued from a situation is the only miracle out there. That is not true. Sustain is equally a miraculous move of God. And some of you walk in it every single day. And you don't even realize it. You're not paying attention to what he is doing, even though your circumstances don't resolve the way you want them to. We need to learn to recognize the immense grace that is flowing toward us all the time. That grace that gets you up in the morning, keeps you moving on, allows you to raise your hands and praise God, even in deep hurt, deep sorrow, and deep uh, adversity. And so we don't like those things and we pray hard against them. But the truth is that the power of God is displayed sometimes best through suffering and pain, just like Paul learned. And so we learn lessons in faithfulness. We also learn lessons in comfort. And a lot of people can uh, kind of sign on to the fact that yeah, maybe God is doing something in a difficult time that we have. But we kind of miss the fact that God has something bigger in mind for our adversities than just us. Now, um, a lot of people uh, don't understand that God is trying to prepare us for service to other people. And I've heard people say a lot of times to me, you know, I would serve God. I don't really know what my ministry is. I don't really know what God wants me to do. I don't have any skills. I don't have anything like this. And my question is always like, you got any pain? Got any heartache? Been through anything hard in your life? Then you have a ministry. Look what this verse says in 2 Corinthians 1. It says here, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and what? The God of all comfort. We love that part, right? He's my comforter and comforts us in all our troubles. <coughs> love that part, right? Don't stop there. So that. So that is worth it. Tell you this is what the reason that you receive the comfort from God, not just for you, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we receive ourselves from God. So God's looking beyond you. He's got lots of power for you, but he is equipping you to reach other people through the things that you have gone through in your life. So here's the deal. The way we respond to adversity is hugely important. If we get angry, turn our backs on God, then we stifle the flow of God's comfort toward us, but we also short circuit our ability to pass it on to other people. 
Now let me tell you a quick story, a uh, personal story about me. Uh, my dad passed away about four and a half years ago. It was after a very long, uh, debilitating disease, over eight years. And so uh, when he was getting toward the end, we kind of knew it was coming. So my mom called me, and I went up there about three days before he actually passed. And so while she was with him and taking care of him, she didn't really leave the house much. So it was my job to do all the errand running and all the other things for her, you know, going to the drugstore, picking up this, dropping off that, that kind of stuff. So the morning that my dad actually passed away, uh, my job was to go to the grocery store because we were out of milk and bread and all that kind of stuff. We weren't going to have anything for supper. And so I got up and we were aware that we was very near the end. And he actually did end up passing about 10.30 in the morning. Anybody been through that kind of situation knows the flurry of activity that just happens after somebody, especially if you're at home. You have the hospice people show up, and then the funeral people show up, and then the pastor shows up, and the relatives show up, and on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And that was a steady stream of all this stuff going on. At, at, and it lasts until about 6 o'clock. Well, at 6 o'clock, we were hungry, and we had, I hadn't been to the grocery store. We still didn't have what we needed. So I told Mom, I said, I didn't want to leave her in an empty house there. So I said, why don't you come and go with me? We'll just go get a bite to eat, get what we need, and come back home. So loaded her up. We, we met, went there and um, ended up at Walmart. And so, so I was pushing our cart down the aisle. I can remember having this feeling. Thinking, my dad just died, and here we are at Walmart. This is so weird. Why are we going to Walmart? But I knew that we would wake up tomorrow with no milk and no bread. And we were, so here we were, pushing our cart through the aisles, and we weren't talking. We were just numb from all that had just taken place. And you know, no one noticed what was going on either. People were just talking and around us and bumping into your carts, and you know, you know. Cash register, cash people are slow and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I thought later, I was like, you know what we need? We need a little sign on the front of our cart that said, death in the family, uh, please tread lightly or something like that. And maybe people would have known what was going on. They would have let us go in front of them. Um, it would speak softer, that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, people don't carry signs, do they? They go, that can really help, right? So I wrote a little button that said, you know, I'm worried about my kid. I'm worried about my relationship. I, I have this health thing that happened. If they had a sign, then we would know what was going on. But the truth is, we as believers, we don't need signs. We don't need signs to help us. That's because you can be certain that every single person you see today, tomorrow, next week, with their friends, family, Complete strangers, they are experiencing some kind of collateral damage of living. They are all grieving somebody, missing somebody, worried about somebody, their marriages are crumbling, their mortgage payments are late, they're waiting on test results from their kid. Something is going on. They're standing at Walmart holding a gallon of milk and three bananas with a whole sort in their lives. That's right. People are stumbling around all around you with huge, sucking chest wounds of loss, and pain, and hurt. Yet most of the time we're oblivious. We're all about our thing. Forget that we as believers are here to bring the comfort of God to them. We need to stop looking so heavily, turning in on ourselves, even when we have immense pain, and open our eyes to see that there's other people with pain as well. And uh, see that as a reality that we, and then we can share the love of Christ with them and make a connection with them that could be a bridge to their eternal salvation into his kingdom. See, sharing your faith is not about holding a sign on the side of the road. It's not about arguing theology with people across the table. Now, we know some theology because we get, we need to know some theology because we need to know, get it right. But we don't need to argue with people. <laughs> sharing your faith is sharing about what God has done in your life, specifically in the area of suffering, difficulty, and heartache. Because you have no idea how 
how powerful that is to a world that is drowning in agony and they don't know what to do with it. This is what we are here to do. This is our assignment. So what if we learn to see the room cashier, the callous remark by a family member, or somebody who is just angry at us and snaps for no reason? What if we saw those as flashing warning signs telling us that someone is in pain? Instead of seeing them as personal attacks, what if we learn to lower our knee-jerk reaction to be defensive about it and glare back when we said something like, are you okay? Can I pray for you? You don't seem like yourself today. Is everything okay? What would that do for them? And what would it do for you? So as we wrap all of this up, remember that God is faithful no matter what. And it's not for us to determine how that faithfulness manifests itself. Just believe that he is always with you and working something that you probably can't see at all. And also remember that God intends for us to be comforters. That your pain, your suffering, your adversity may be the thing God uses to reach somebody else. But you must learn to surrender to the lessons that only adversity teaches us. And accept them, no matter where they come from, as God's refining hand in us and in the lives of others. And he intends only to do Good. I love, love this quote from Tim Keller, and we'll finish up with this. Suffering is meaningful. There's purpose to it, and if faced rightly, it can drive us like a nail deep into the love of God and into more stability and spiritual power than we can ever imagine. Learn to keep your eyes and ears open. Your pain is your ministry. Turn to God in it. Trust his sustaining faithfulness through it. Seek him for your comfort and look for opportunities to pass it along. Amen? <laughs> God, we just thank you that you're so much bigger and doing so much more than we ever imagined. Our limited, tiny little understanding of what's happening is just minuscule before your plans, before your sovereignty, before your goals. God, help us to realize that we can draw on you for whatever we need. And that even when it doesn't turn out the way we want, that we can trust you with it. God, help us to open our eyes to see what's going on in the lives of people and that we have the answer that they need. God, help us to open our mouths. Help us to share what you allow to touch our lives to be a bridge to your kingdom. And we pray this all in the mighty, powerful, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.